Hey guys, and uh, welcome to the next video in the Titanic series. Now, before we get started, I just need to take a moment and say, wow. Like, I cannot get over the performance of my last video. Thank you all so much for watching and, and you know, enjoying my content and everything like that. I'm enjoying making it, and yeah, I just couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you so much. And as always, for this next video, please hit that like button, please subscribe, and yeah, and now let's get into the video. All right. So this video is going to cover a little tiny tidbit of Titanic history that not a lot of people know. You see mentions of him here and there in like the featured films like A Night to Remember and the James Cameron Titanic film, but it's a man by the name of Charles Yalkin. And Charles Yalkin was uh, the chief baker on board the RMS Titanic. And he survived the sinking in a very, very odd way. The man we are talking about is named Charles Yakin. He boarded the Titanic in Belfast and was going to be the head baker on board the ship during her maiden voyage to America. Now, Charles Yakin was a great crew member on the Titanic. He did his job, he did everything that was expected of him, and at the time of the iceberg impact, he was in his bunk sound asleep and he said the jolt awoke him. So he went up to go see what was going on and he was sent up to the boat deck and, uh, just to help uh, get the lifeboats ready and load them up with bread and supplies and stuff like that that the passengers would later need throughout the course of the sinking just to help people out. Now, when he got up to the boat deck, he was originally gonna put in be put in charge of lifeboat 10. Um, but at the time that when he got there, there were already two sailors ready to go for that lifeboat. So he didn't protest, he didn't do anything like that. He did the gentleman thing and, you know, let the women and children go and there was already enough men. So so he did what, uh, what he just thought was best. He went down below to the ship's pantry, got himself some alcohol and retired to his cabin. And the original film, A Night to Remember, does a great job of showcasing this. I've got a clip that I'll show here in just a second. The clip you are seeing here is from the original Titanic film, A Night to Remember in 1958. And this shows Charles Yalkin back in his room, just chilling out and preparing a glass of wine and just getting ready to, you know, enjoy the evening as best he can. He really doesn't have any intentions of trying to survive the night. Yeah, uh, Charles Yalkin was a character. He, and this is kind of exaggerating, there's a running joke in the Titanic community that he made it his personal job to make sure the ship went down with as little alcohol as possible. Now that is an exaggeration, but you know, who cares? It's kind of fun just to joke about it a little bit. Anyway, after the last clip you saw, uh, he headed back up on deck and uh, by that time all the lifeboats were gone. So he decided to start throwing deck chairs and everything else that he could uh, overboard and into the ocean. And there's a deleted scene in the James Cameron film which depicts that. This is the deleted scene from the James Cameron movie. And as you can see, Charles Yalkin hard at work throwing deck chairs and everything else he can into the ocean before the ship sinks. And of course, he has to take a drink of alcohol in this shot as well, just so we know who he is. But anyway, so after all that was done, he went back to the ship's pantry to get some more alcohol. <laughs> and, uh, that's where a really, really interesting piece of evidence from how the Titanic sank came into being. Now, before he went to the ship's pantry, he went by his room again. And by that point, his room was underwater. So he was kind of out of luck there. This is another clip from the movie A Night to Remember that came out in 1958. And here he is trying to go back to his room and only to realize that his room was already underwater. So what does he have to do? Just goes back up on deck. And um, so what he decided to do was head up to the ship's pantry, like I said, to go get some alcohol. And when he was on his way there, he uh, passed a man known as Jack Thayer. And Jack Thayer noticed him too. And this account is uh, inside the great book, A Night to Remember by Walter Lord. Uh, it's an older book, but this book is pretty accurate in the accounts of everything that happened the night the Titanic sank. One big piece of evidence that they got wrong was at the time they didn't know the ship split in two, but that's a topic that we're gonna cover later. Anyway, so in the book, Jack Thayer says when he saw Charles that, well, that's a man I'm not gonna see in the morning because he could tell how buzzed he was. But turns out Charles survived. Anyway, so Charles went to the ship's pantry and at this point, the Titanic had already 
drop down pretty low in the water. My hand's the water line. And he said that he heard something buckle within the ship, like something break or crunch. And what he noticed was this was the beginning of the breakup, of the Titanic breaking too. And he was hearing the metal and the steel beginning to, to break. And what you have to understand when a structure fails, it's a very, very slow process usually. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes instead of just the big event that everyone saw like Titanic breaking into. So he was in the ship's pantry getting a drink and he heard this loud buckling sound, like this loud crunching sound all around him. So he's like, oh, okay, uh, it's time for me to get out of the pantry here. And then he headed for the stern. And the most, it's a little bit hit and miss as to where exactly he was, but it's most likely that he was located right around here in this small point in between the front and the back of the ship. This is the sinking animation from the Titanic Honor and Glory team. And as you can see from this animation, the Titanic rolled over on her side during her final moments. And this right here impacted what Charles Jalkin would do next. So... As you saw from that last animation from the incredible team at Titanic Honor and Glory, I highly, once again, I highly recommend you go check out their channel. The ship was more or less on her side like this during the final plunge after the breakup and everything. And what Charles said in like one of the testimonies is that he climbed onto the side of the ship right around here, like on the wall. So the ship is completely vertical at this point and he's right around here. And he said that as the stern went down and rose up, he just walked up the hall, like walking on top of windows and portholes until the Titanic just slipped beneath the surface and disappeared. And I don't really know how true this is, but he says that he stepped off the ship and didn't get his hair wet. And now the, here's the other little tidbit as to how being drunk saved him. He was in that water for two hours. And he said at the at when he survived and they picked him up, he said that he barely felt the cold. And that was probably because of all the alcohol he drank. So the kind of the running theory is that the alcohol made him so numb or warmed him up or something that the cold water didn't affect him like it affected everybody else. The average life expectancy in water that cold is about 10 to 15 minutes. And he was swimming around for two hours before a lifeboat picked him up. All right, guys. Well. Now you know a little tiny tidbit of Titanic history about how being drunk saved a man's life as the Titanic was sinking. And uh, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed making these videos and everything. And hey, once again, thank you all so much for everything you're doing for me and my channel. I really appreciate it. And as always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And yeah, I'm going to keep making more videos like this and do them as much and as often as I can. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.